My poetic numbers. One, to the ladies. I'm sorry to say this, but honestly speaking, nowadays men don't choose a lady by how she's thick rather than how she think. Because you see, her body will only make memories that will later fade away. But her mindset will build a home and raise a family. So my young boys, choose wisely. Second, I once approached a lady in town with intentions of asking for directions. But before I could even utter a word to her, she told me, Sorry, I don't date black guys. My feelings were a bit hurt. But as a man, life still goes on. Three, please don't ever judge me by how I dress. In a family where I grew up in, we were told never to be the materialistic type of kids. Because all of these are ugly things. One day they'll not be there. Four, I don't like violence. Not at all. So it still hurts me that everywhere that I go, my country is mostly known because of war. I hope my future young generation will do something about it. Five, to the young generation, please know what you do before you do it. Because in the current world we live in, the youth are lost. They believe that if you don't do drugs, you're the boring type of a person to hang out with. But if you do drugs, then you're the kind of the best person to hang out with. Six, in case I become successful in life, God willing, I want my friends and relatives all to be on the same bus with me because we ride as a family. Seven, my mother decided to fly with the angels a week to Christmas. So for the first time in my life, I never celebrated the birth of Jesus. Eight, my elder sister recently gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. So I'm a proud uncle now and my mother is a grandma in heaven. My poetic numbers. Amazing pieces from poet K2. I told you guys, I told you, you're going to love this. He has so uh, he has pieces that are so well put together. You just want to sit down and just watch. K2, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I've been fine. Happy New Year. We have not seen each other since, you know, since the last time you were here. 2020, 2020. actually. Happy New Year, man. Wow, okay, Happy New Year, Marambili. Happy yeah, 2021 <laughs> and the yeah. 2022 yeah, one. The happy New Year. How are you doing? How have you been? I've been fine. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been here and there. Yes. Uh, we thank God uh, we are healthy and we are back. Yes. yes. How are you feeling this mm, New Year? So far, Siezi mm -hmm. complain. So mm -hmm. far, so good. Uh, we're still uh, looking to see what the future has for us, but uh, so far, no more, no complaints. We're still pushing on. Amazing, yeah. amazing, Sasa. Because I feel, I feel like honestly, I thought you were here last year. Like 2019, Kwanza Haikuwa. We can't even count that as a okay, year. Man. Then 2020 flew by. So what, what have you been working on the entire of last year? That was 2021. Like what were you doing? What projects were you having during the entire of that year? Yeah. So mostly 2021, I will say that uh, I've been working on some personal projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically, I've been doing uh, performance mostly mm -hmm. here and there. Because the last time I came here, I uh, wasn't uh, that much into performance, yes. as you can remember. And uh, so, 2021, we decided to uh, it's perfectishe, yeah. to perfectishe uh, performance. So I've been doing performance here and there, counties, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I've gone to Nakuru. We've even gone to an extent of going to Kisumu. Yeah. Dala. Yeah. Amazing. So we've been doing performance here and there. Yes. And I think uh, results zake zinaanza kujionyesha yeah, exactly. pole pole. Yeah, I can, I can see them. I can see them. I can see them online. I can see they have definitely, the, your hard work has started giving fruit and i love i love that no for guys that don't know now that it is 2020 20, i'm still wrapping my head around that uh but give us a brief brief history of poet k you were in nani unafanyanga nini ulianza poetry lini just a kidogo brief history for the people who have not seen you last year here on ku tv 
Yeah, so basically Poet Kitu is a young performing poet yeah. uh, from South Sudan, but currently in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, I was born and raised in Kenya, by the way. Yeah. I was born in the refugee camp that is Kakuma refugee camp that is located in Turkana, Okundu mm-hmm. Penya mm-hmm. And uh, I've been raised, I've been raised there, but uh, came to this side now uh, for further studies. Yeah. So that's where I've been raised, did my primary high school and also continuing with the with the other part of education over here. Yes. So uh um currently based in in Nairobi and uh poetry started uh, I think back in high school. Yeah. Ilianza to kimchezo mchezo ile mambo na kuongea here and there you understand how people are talkative in high school. Yeah. So back in 20 2016 by 2017 that's when I started writing poetry but uh performance now professionally if i can say so yeah uh, i started doing it in uh, 2019 that was at uh, uh player theater in nakuru that's why i did my first performance mm-hmm. and as they say the rest is history the and here we are is history amazing i want to give you a chance for another performance because when we come back i want us to talk a little bit about refu poetry because that, that is i know that is close to your heart yeah. but right about now a second performance for you guys at home to enjoy So, a young man full of dreams. He stands in front of a mirror and says, "Of late, life has been so unfair to me. Too much stress to bear mentally as a young youth. Suicidal thoughts on my mind daily. So tell me God, what's next for me? My friends have turned into my enemies, and my enemies have turned into my worst nightmare. They smile at me from a far distance, but run away from me during my darkest days. I'm mentally in hell, but spiritually in heaven." The doors to my success seem to have locked me out. Keys thrown into the deepest ocean, and the more I look for them, the deeper I get into my evil thoughts. People view my life from a low point. So at times I just take drugs to let them watch me get high. I don't know if it's helping, but I don't care because it's the only loyal friend that I've got around me at the moment. I have a family, but I still feel lonely because none of them is always there for me when I need them the most. My heart is crying right now. But when I'm gone, they'll be the ones to cry for me. I'm in the dark right now, but when I'm no more, they will light candles as a symbol of sending me off. Every night I'm sleeping in my ragged clothes, but a day is coming when I'll sleep with my casket closed. There are times I'm on my knees asking God to prepare a place up there for me when I'm about to take my own life. But something keeps on telling me not to do it. That there's something that is still here for me. But I wonder what's taking it so long because the inner demons that I'm fighting are almost taking over me and I may end up doing something stupid. So a young man full of dreams. He stands in front of a mirror and says, "Of late, life has been so unfair to me. Too much stress to bear mentally as a young youth. Suicidal thoughts on my mind daily. So tell me God, what's next for me?" They call me an introvert for not speaking up. But once I do, they're the first ones to tell my secrets to the public. I laugh at me. There are days I'm afraid to sleep, wondering what if I never wake up to ever see my loved ones. I know I'm not the only one that is going through all of this, because I know of young boys that have been sentenced to life imprisonment for crimes they never committed, but just because of the bad company that they had. I know of young girls who are rape victims that have been chased away from their homes just because of reporting an uncle who sexually tried to abuse them, and they are now viewed. A family enemies i know of young men that have taken their own lives just because of not being in a position to feed their younger family and nobody was there to offer a helping hand when they needed it the most i know of young ladies who are currently facing a judgmental community on why they got pregnant before they even completed their studies and this brings me to the question as they say why are african parents so quick to notice a pregnant child but not a depressed one i know where the future But my generation is slowly fading away because of being misunderstood. I know we are the future, but my generation is slowly fading away because of having questions but no answers to be given. I know we are the future, but my generation is slowly fading away because of living in an hypocritical environment. And then when it's too late, that's when questions are being asked. Why did she kill herself yet we had seen a brighter future ahead of her? Why did he kill himself yet We were there for him. Well, the truth of the matter is depression is real and it's claiming lives behind those closed doors that you pass without knocking. So check on your friend.
so a young man full of dreams he stands in front of a mirror and says of late life has been so unfair to me too much stress to bear mentally as a young youth suicidal thoughts on my mind daily so tell me god what's next for me thank you Another, another one, another beautiful, beautiful piece from Poet K2. And I am here for all of it. And I know you guys are enjoying as well as learning. This brings me to my next question, K2. Um, what is your inspiration for all these pieces? Like that one was on depression. I'd love to know how, how do you choose what topics to cover? And, uh, you know, how do you go about it? Yeah. So basically, as they say, uh, as poets, uh, we are the voice of the voiceless back yes. in the community. Yeah? Yes. So we have people that go through things, but uh, they're not bold enough to come out and speak speak about them. So currently, uh, the, the poem that I just performed right now, mm -hmm. uh, it was inspired uh, by a friend of mine back in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't mention his name yeah. uh, for security purposes. Yeah. But uh, back in high school, I had a friend of mine. Uh, he almost uh, he was so much depressed because of family issues here and there yeah. so he almost committed suicide and we were classmates yeah so uh, i had a chance to to talk it out with him yeah uh, to leo one and two and through that niliweza kujua zile vitu and uh, through that sasa we had a deep discussion and for and for us or for me to avoid such a thing happening yeah. to anyone else that is out there that uh, I can't reach yeah. uh, to uh, that's how the poem came through you wrote an amazing piece yeah mm -hmm. and that's how it was inspired amazing yeah. amazing I like that and I hope you guys at home are listening to this of course remember to check on your friends and talk okay just talk look for a friend talk to them and also frequently check on your friends you don't know what is happening behind those closed doors as um k2 has said of course i love love that these pieces are practical you know and they are put together so well to drive a message home that is so clear and i love that about poet k2 now let's talk about refu poet uh refu poetry and what is that all about because i know it is right in the heart of why you do poetry so refu poet is uh it's an organization that uh, basically supports uh, refugees yeah. uh through art so if you're a singer if you're a dancer if mm -hmm. you're a poet if you're a rapper all all kind of arts so i was lucky enough to to work with them through uh 2020 that's when i first came here yeah if you can remember with uh, desmond yes yeah so uh we, we've had some few uh a few programs that we've done here mm -hmm. and there uh, in association with uh, uh, JZ2. So basically the, the organization has helped a lot yeah. and uh, it has nurtured a lot of talent uh, from my brothers, my sisters who are back in the camp. So basically if there are discussions, like the one that uh, was done about uh, the camp being closed, yes. the Kakuma refugee camp. Mm -hmm. So it was a very sensitive uh, topic to us mm -hmm. as refugees who, who have been here for the last almost three decades yes. so far. So yeah, so uh, Refugee Point basically is the, that kind of an organization that gives us refugees a platform to uh, to give uh, to give our our opinions about the thing. So Refugee Point basically has been a very good platform, and we've been working here and there, and uh, so far. Uh, we're still working with them with uh, with uh, JZ2 so uh, other other programs to come yeah. in the future um, amazing are you are you planning on any event to go back to Kakuma because I would be very very interested uh, f uh, funny thing is that I was in Kakuma like uh -huh. uh, three two months ago uh -huh. i was in kakuma three two months ago there's mm -hmm. a there's an event that we did that was called uh, breathing art mm -hmm. that was um was kumi muzwa tatu yeah muzwa kumi muzwa tisa yeah yeah we did uh, uh, an event over there it was a competition by the way yeah yeah so i was lucky enough I, I went away as yes. the as the winner amazing yes. are there are there plans to go back yeah kakuma is home 
no exactly. matter. Exactly. I, I would like to tag along. I'm asking this because I think I, I didn't know, I don't know if I told you this last time, but back in primary school, I had friends. I had friends who were from South Sudan that we schooled together with, actually. And it's it's been such a long time. I'd love to go back because I know they, li they lived there. Of course, maybe they have moved out or something. But I'd love to go back. Like, that. that's uh, um, that whole thing gave Kakuma a special place in my heart and I am looking forward so whenever you have a plan let me let me in okay I, I want us to talk about your upcoming EP which is the reason but that you're here but since you're here you know another piece one more piece and then we come and talk about your EP as we close right okay. amazing guys let's, enjoy let's make it romantic okay so to the young beautiful lady outside there that will one day be my wife the mother to my 19 unborn children. Yes, you heard me right, 19. The new pure generation I want her to give birth to. The one that will have the other portion of my heart. The one that I'll even call babe before we even have one. Hi. Allow me to introduce myself from a far distance before we even meet. I go by the name Chol Matiop Chol. But most people call me K2. I'm a poet. So I fell in love with words before I even fall for you. And I'm sorry for that. Please forgive me. I'm from a motherland that gives birth to tall, dark giants. That's South Sudan. I was raised and brought up by an African mother who told me that, my son, when choosing a wife, don't let the natural allowances that they have deceive you. You see, she may have mountains on her back, but when you guys quarrel in a relationship, the echo of the sound may make the mountains crumble and end the marriage. So choose from that and the manners that she has. I don't know what type of man you like, but uh, three things define me. I'm tall, dark, and hands. Okay, the other one, I leave it up to you to decide when we meet physically, but please don't disappoint me. Don't break my heart. I'm not bragging by saying all of this, but honestly speaking, I think... I'm a full package. I'm a type of a man that will give you slow morning kisses on a Monday, tight warm hugs on a Tuesday, flatter with you the entire Wednesday, show you about how to handle hardship in life on a Thursday, take you to my parents for blessings on a Friday, make babies on a Saturday, and then go on our knees and tell the Almighty Father thank you for the life that you've given us on a Sunday. So how lucky are you? We may have not met yet, but something tells me that you've got a cute face. A face that reflects the brighter future that we'll have together and the family that we'll raise. We may have not met yet, but something tells me that you've got a personality that will make my daughter proud to call your mother and a role model. We may have not met yet, but something tells me that you've got manners that will teach my son how to treat ladies like a gentleman. So, tell your neighbor who's now stalking on you wherever he is, that he's wasting his time. Because destiny has already told me that you and I are meant for each other. And in case we don't meet you on earth, I'm 100% sure we'll meet in the near future. So my future wife, my last question is, will you marry me? Thank you. Mm. Mm. <laughs> to that lady out there, will you, you know, will you, after such a beautiful, beautiful piece, I do hope that she says yes when she does. <laughs> Poet K2, I really do hope that she uh, she says yes. Now, we are here to talk, to talk about your EP, which I am excited about because I know you have many, many pieces in your bag. How many, roughly, would you say roughly, how many pieces do you have so far? I've got like seven pieces in the in the EP. Yes, yes. I know, not in the EP, yeah. before the EP. How many pieces do you have, Moja, Moja, Moja? Hey, I've got a lot. I've got a lot. <laughs> got a <laughs> I lot. know, so I am definitely looking forward to a chance, you know, to see a composition of a number of them put together. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about your EP1 in mm -hmm. So uh, my, my EP is called uh, The Sun from the South. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, basically it's, uh, it's an EP that was, according to the title of the EP, you can see that uh, it was inspired by where I come from. So mostly, as I said, I've, I've been in Kenya so far, let's say 20, 23, 24 years so far. So most of the time, uh, most of my friends are Kenyans. I've met a lot of Kenyans. Uh, I've, I've met other nationalities. So most of the time, whenever we'll interact, we're having those deep conversations. Uh, so bro, 
wewe tuambie bwana unatoka wapi mm-hmm. tell us about back at home imekwaje juu inakaa ujenda sana so basically that's what inspired uh, the 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 title of the of the of the EP so fan of the south that's where uh, the title came from and basically talks about uh personally about me mm-hmm. talks about some few uh topics about uh, my motherland and uh, some private things about me too amazing yes. amazing so how many are we expecting in this ep uh we're expecting seven seven, seven. yeah seven pieces yep. is there any collab huko ndani hey imagine uh-huh. uh for the first time uh i'm i'm doing an ep with no features yes it's only me just Yeah, yeah, it's And not it's not that uh siwezi fanya kazi nao lakini most of the pieces that are in there yes. na relate nayo sana exactly like hence yes. the title you know yes. like you 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 got to do what you got to do Kamisa. you have to do your own and do you know yeah. other other pieces so totally understandable understandable plus we really do play your pieces so i would Thank not you. mind Thank listening you. to seven of them on different things on so guys if you want to know about K2 himself of course about his interactions people homeland um the EP is what you are looking forward to when will it be out uh for now to just ja, ja set the date because mm-hmm. uh, most of the poems are still zinapikwa uh, bado jikoni pale school studio uh-huh. yeah so uh, for now to just ja disclose a date but yeah. uh, late within this month late uh, january yeah kuna piece moja tunaweza from you know from the EP hata kama ni kadogo one verse hivi just get a taste of what we are expecting okay uh, this is called uh, ali first marriage uh-huh. yeah so this this is a piece all right take a listen guys so it's two hours past 6 pm and i'm worried my younger sister chol is not home yet the last time she came home this late was two years ago when she was 16 And I remember father whipping her so hard she'll come running to me shouting brother brother I'll hold her so tight wipe her tears and tell her angel don't cry big brother is here so at this time I'm worried and I start making phone calls I call our friend Monica Monica says I told left two hours ago and she looked unhappy I call our friend Ayen Ayen says I told left an hour ago and she took a bible with her I don't know where I got all the other contacts but I kept on calling. 3 hours into calling and Achol is nowhere to be found. Achol turned 18 a week ago. Oh. So she now thinks she is a big girl. She can come home whenever she likes, go wherever she wants. I swear this time she's going to get it at all. Big brother is not going to be there for you when you need him the most. At all big brother is not going to wipe your tears when you need him the most. At all big brother won't be there for you. But wait. Something is not right. Father had visitors today. His 61 year old friend was here today and they seem to have been discussing something very serious and each and every time I've heard them speaking about 100 cows. No. It's not what I'm thinking. I'm just overthinking. But why will father do this? Has the greed of wealth become more important than the dignity of his own daughter? Has the greed of wealth become more important than the future of his own daughter? So this time I'm very freaked out and I start looking for her and within no time I found a chol at a river bank she turns around holding a bible in her hands looks at me and says brother go and tell father that I had given the family everything but in return he valued wealth over me and before I could do anything a chol had already thrown herself into the river and drowned to be continued <laughs> amazing amazing i feel like this ep is so up close and personal you guys cannot afford you guys afford to miss it at any cost okay um uh, so the ep is to be released end of january we don't have a date yet but i'm sure just uh, he's going to give us his social media handles guys follow up follow up on me i will follow up on him to make sure that when the ep is released we are going to be among the first people to have it you tell me them plans for 2022 after the ep and social media handles as we close yeah so uh 2022 uh mipango ni mingi sana uh let's say uh 
ndio hii tumeanza vizuri KUTV uh, for the media tour yeah. uh, such a privilege I'm Amazing. thankful Thank yeah you. so uh, after once we released the the EP basically uh, tutaambia penye penye tuta drop and if we'll be doing live performance you pia will disclose it on our social media platforms but from now mtusame ya kwamba tujakuja na full information so after that uh, maybe tours of performance here and there i'll have to go back to kakuma uh, which is uh, what i call now my my homeland because that's where i was born uh, we do some performance there because most of the pieces in yuko hapo ndani they relate with um come at there's a poem titled refugee that i wrote a uh, long time ago yeah, yeah so uh, after apo to 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 end the uh, akuma we do some tours over there and uh, lucky enough to rude yuku and we still work if possible uh i may end up giving you guys an album at the end of 2022 i know right yeah. yes, if if the ep is january i yeah. mean <laughs> you you can fix us in there and give us a I'll full be, album sir. and we will be so excited social media handles uh so on all my social media handles uh at instagram that is point k2 on facebook though wamekuwa kin force for the last so uh, five years it will be my official name that is john chol matiop and then on Uh, on youtube that is uh point k2 that is point and then k then uh hyphen and then two in words and then on twitter that is point k2 and then on my email that is at chol matiop 088 gmail.com yeah amazing amazing just google right point k2 instagram um uh, twitter you are going to find him and you're going to find his work guys and you are doing amazing at k2 all the best We wish you all the best for this year that is 2022. Take your EP to the world, take your album to the world. Destiny connectors along your way as you even become a destiny connector for other people. Thank you for joining us. It's all Asia, I am hoping that I'm going to see you at least a second and a third time before the end of the year that is 2022. We can make that happen. Yes, I want to give you a chance for your final performances. Guys, I know final performance. Uh guys, I know you have had a great time. I know you're enjoying those pieces. So text in 0739110544 because after his piece we are going to go for a break and when we come back I might just decide to go through all your comments. But right about now ladies and gentlemen, I give you for the last time poet So hi. I'm from South Sudan. Yeah, I know. You've all probably heard of the country. So that's my motherland. And because of civil war, I've got brothers and sisters staying in every part all over continents. I've got others in Australia, others in Canada, Ethiopia, Uganda, and thanks to the United Nations and the Kenyan government, I'm living with others in Kakuma. Our negative stories have been told in every part all over the world. And whenever we think it's coming to an end that's when it starts. The other time I tried calling mom to ask her how everybody is doing back at home. She picked up. But she seems to have been in a hurry because when I tried talking to her all I could hear was son son and before she hung up I had gunshots. At this time I knew a child somewhere has become an orphan. Someone's father has become a victim of death. A woman has been turned into a widow massacre has taken place. This was 15th December 2013. A year that made me believe death really exists. And this got me asking my father, "Dad, what has always been your dream in this country?" He took me by the hands, looked into my eyes and started shedding tears and says, "Son, I've never had a dream cause I've never slept." I do expect me to sleep when all I've been doing is running in the bushes protecting you guys from flying bullets. I do expect me to sleep and whenever I close my eyes I'm being woken up by sounds of innocent women, children, men crying for their lives. How do you expect me to sleep when the floor I'm supposed to sleep on is full of blood? And that's why nowadays I'm not known by my name. I'm known as a refugee. I've always wanted to be a journalist but wait how do I report death of my people each and every time my sister wanted to be a doctor but she can't bear having bloods of innocent lives in her hands every day my younger brother wanted to be a professional footballer but his legs were taken away from him I don't know why all this is happening but tribe is nothing but a name we've only been given to divide us so instead of preaching war why don't we preach peace instead of spreading hate why don't we spread love instead of dividing ourselves why don't we unite together as one because i went to a foreign land 
tried making friendship with this guy. Everything was going well, but he immediately walked away from me when a passerby said, Hey, be careful. He's from South Sudan. At this time, I started hating myself. Not because of the country, but why was I even born in such a time whereby your brother helps you today and tomorrow. He's the same, same person that pulls a trigger on your head. And that's why nowadays, I'm not known by my name. I'm known as a refugee. My flag has six colors. Black. A color that represents the black melanin skin that my people have. A skin no matter the scars on it, it will still look beautiful. A skin no matter the tears that have fallen on it, it's still going to shine with it. Red. A moment of silence. The blood that our forefathers shed when struggling for freedom. White. The peace that we've been longing for decades after decades. Green. The natural wealth that my country has that is not seen because of war. Blue. A color that takes me back to the good old days when we used to laugh as we fish on that river Nile. Yellow. A color that gives me hope and determination that no matter the darkest days my country and my people are going through, one day there'll be a light at the end of the tunnel because I want to be known by my name not as a refugee based for South Sudan thank you